thing. The thing to keep in mind is that the problem with the use of auto GPTs as an example is that the order of magnitude of capital that you need has now just gone down. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of a $10 million Series A. So we used to, be, you know, people in the height were doing 30 and $40 million Series A's into crazy, very bubblish ideas in NFTs and all this other stuff. That's idiotic today. Because a two or three person company can now do the work of 20 to 30 people. And the amount of capital that they need is really their salaries, plus the cost of renting some GPUs on your favorite pick your cloud. And so all of a sudden, you can get huge amounts of progress in weeks and months with hundreds of thousands or low millions of dollars. So if you've raised all of a sudden a $5 billion fund because you were trying to do late stage deals, and now all of a sudden said, well, wait, we'll just pivot to early stage. But what are you going to do? Find the next 30 person company? That's not going to work because you have to know how to write 500,000 to million dollar checks with two or Ooh. three people Ooh. and I love and it. really and really help them and really understand their technical ability to execute, right? Mm. Yeah. But then it it also quickly becomes a thing where maybe you're better off just doing 500 of these two and three person teams. We tried this experiment seven years ago, this thing called capital as a service where we were doing this automated investing. I don't know if you guys remember this, but it was like yeah. some machine learning that we did on all of our portfolio companies. And all somebody had to do was fill out a form and send us some metrics and we would have a machined decision, right? So humans would not be allowed to make the investment decision. The problem that we ran into was there was a lot of great companies all around the world, but the administrative burden of supporting 500 companies was unbelievably yep. large and complicated. Oh, you have a company in Indonesia. Well, there's another company in South Korea and here's a company in, you know, oh, they're Botswana. raising a new round. Oh, they have to God. get board approval. They got to do this. It's signatures. I mean, it, it's hard to scale. Yeah. So, so, so the, the VC, which is a software light, people heavy, artisanal business, all of a sudden becomes misfactored, right? So you actually need to be highly automated and use software yourself in order to put 500 three person teams on the field. So this is what I mean by it's really, I think Friedberg's use of the term dust storm is a really good one. It's extremely, extremely confusing what to do. And if you have large amounts of money, that may actually now, what used to be a real differentiator and a key to success may actually become an impediment because you, yeah, you, are, forced to, you, you are forced to do business in a classical way that has changed, frankly, in the last 90 days. What do you think, Sachs? What's the question? Because we're touching on a lot of different things here. Do you feel like this is a dust storm and it's murky and it's just hard to place bets as a capital allocator because something comes out the next day or 48 hours later or the next week that takes the previous idea and wipes it out? And then and how do you scale and be capital efficient. Well, we're at the early stages of a huge new wave. And I think that creates a lot of opportunity. So yeah, you've got to basically separate what's really interesting from the fool's gold. There's definitely going to be a lot of that. But at least there's a reason now to believe that, say, dozens of unicorns could be created in the next couple of years. So before hmm. we were getting kind of long in the tooth on some of these tech cycles. I mean, cloud, social, mobile, I mean, there was a reason to believe that those earlier waves had sort of played out, that the big winners had already been determined, and maybe there wouldn't be too many more big winners in those spaces. But now we have a whole new catalyst for founders to do all sorts of new things. And so I tend to think that's super exciting. You know, we're in the early stages. And I do think there will be dozens of new unicorns minted in various aspects of AI. It could be in AI infrastructure, you know, whether you're seeing now, there's a lot of funding that's gone into vector databases or platforms for creating agents, or it could be in AI co-pilots, basically that tackle various professional categories and create a co-pilot for coders or a co-pilot for doctors or lawyers or architects. I think there's going to be potentially multiple unicorns created in, um, in those categories. Uh, I think there's going to be SaaS software products that were just good before, but now will actually be great because the incorporation of APIs from, you know, AI foundation models were, will just 
turbocharge the capabilities. And so there's a whole bunch of SaaS products that I think become newly interesting and, and better. They go from being vitamins to painkillers. So, you know, we're looking in all those categories and I think we'll end up making some bets, but there's also going to be a lot of companies that are flashes in the pan or get undermined. You know, there'll be SaaS companies that actually become less attractive because of disruption from AI. But look, I think all of this, this maelstrom is great for an investor. I mean, if you're going to spray and pray, it's not good. you got to be selective about where you take your shots. But I think this is the most exciting environment we've been in in, in a number of years. Right, yeah. I mean, it, it makes me want to go to work every day and see It's so the funny new you stuff. say that, Sax, because I literally am looking for an office space in, in San Mateo to start like doing the incubator in person again. And on Monday, I'm having 60 companies come to San Francisco. We'll be at my attorney's office and we're having like a, a founder university with just all these new startups that we invested in to just hang out for a day. The enthusiasm right now is amazing. And what's really unique is the developers who had three out of seven companies they interviewed with offer them 150 or 250k packages, RSUs, whatever. Now there's no offer from Facebook, there's no Apple, there's no Twitter, there's no Google or Microsoft offer coming in to be the backstop against starting a company. So what are they doing? They're saying, you know what, I got two friends who got laid off. I got one friend who's halfway out the door. Let's just start something. Let's just start something who can give me 100k who can give me 500k. And it's, uh, it's, it's so invigorating to see the talented people, not people who've learned how to, you know, hack a pitch deck together and tell a story, but people who are actually coding and making MVPs. It's, it's truly exhilarating right now, the amount of two and three person startups I'm seeing. Yeah. And so while you'll have this, it, it, and, it, and it's an incredible, I've never seen this amount of destruction and creation occurring simultaneously. I love this zombie corns yes. concept. You have one half of your portfolio coming apart at the seams, layoffs, re reducing their targets, while people are coming in the door with products that are absolutely awe inspiring. I I'll just give one example, I, I had a company come out of our founder university, I gave them $25,000 to incorporate a developer and his brother who's a screenplay writer. They're taking screenplay writing software sacks that you'll appreciate this having produced two amazing movies. Thank you for smoking. And the Dolly film is called Dolly land. Dolly land. Yeah. Coming they out in making, two months. Coming out in two months. Congratulations to yeah. uh, Emmy Thanks. award winning uh, Oscar winning producer. Uh, he's going to win an Oscar this time. These, <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, the screenplay writing tools that have existed. Mm -hmm. They're like what word processors with formatting. What they're doing is they're saying, Hey, write some dialogue. And then you can have dialogue and say, hey, make it a little snappier, make it a little Tarantino ish, make it a little more, you know, Sorkin ish, and then make a storyboard with, you know, uh, stable diffusion. And I was like, well, this is the genius right. idea. I mean, it's unbelievable. Of course, I'll give you $25,000 for your incorporation. And then they're coming to the accelerator and give them another 100k. And, and every single piece of software. Will that company in success ever raise 25 or $30 million, do you think? No, I think there'll be 12 people. I think it'll be 12 people. I'll, I'll, I'll give them but the 25K, 100K, like and then our, a million. Our industry raises $100 billion a year on the premise that each company, before they become a unicorn, will absorb between 500 and a billion dollars. Yeah, no. I'm going to own 20%, 10 to 20% of the company for low millions. And I, and we'll see. Mid journey is 12 people and no, it's totally bootstrapped. Like, I guess what I'm saying is because in the world of AI, so much work is done for you for free. This is why I'm asking, maybe we will have to change how we do business. On the Hollywood example, there's about to be a writer's guild strike. <laughs> and they may want to think twice about that because this is not the time where you want to be encouraging the industry to find alternatives to writers. Yeah, you want to get back in the office and you want to say, hey, can I, can, is there any other work I can do this weekend, boss? 